Welcome back folks. Today we are doing bolt carriers and bolt carrier groups, the whole assembly. We have reviewed, I want to say I did the Toolcraft. I actually don't remember if I reviewed the Toolcraft. I have reviewed the ADI initially when I got it, but I hadn't had time to put enough rounds through it to really have an opinion. Um, it looks good. All the, the specs were there. But you never know until you run a couple thousand rounds through it in different situations. You know, is it going to hold up? Does it get sticky early? Does it, you know, need more lube? Doesn't like lube. So, got the ADI. This is nitrided. A BCM. This is their old school. Um, I don't even remember what this finish is, but it is very tough and has not worn off after many years of use. And then a Toolcraft that is Carpenter 158 and is MPI'd. I, I know that some of the Toolcrafts were, some of them weren't. Just so that we're all on the same page, this one was and is C158. My understanding is that all of the metals that are used for the bolts are roughly comparable. It's just people seem to like the Carpenter 158 more than the other one. Um, but I haven't heard any reviews or any real world results saying, hey, there's a problem. So, my experience with all of these is varied. I, I gotta be honest, I had high hopes for the ADI and the Toolcraft as economic alternatives to a premium bolt like the BCM. And I have not been 100% disappointed. I haven't been 100% happy. But for 90% of you out there, any of these is going to work great. None of them have broken. None of them have had you know, anything come loose, failures to eject properly under normal use, uh, have not needed any special lubrication or excessive cleaning. They all worked. I mean, they're all, honestly, at this point, dirty as hell, uh, greasy, and yeah, I have not cleaned these since they were last used. <laughs> And to be honest, they're probably going back in the guns they came out of and going to the range again. Uh, I'm probably, you know, maybe a, a splash of a little oil. They're good. I am not obsessive about cleaning these things unless there's a reason for it. And none of these are currently set up for home defense. None of them have any mission critical tasks that have to be taken care of right now. So you know what? A little bit of dirt, not going to kill anything. So... We're going to use the BCM as my standard, my default. This bolt, uh, bolt carrier group, is probably, oh, we're probably eight years old. I'm not positive about that. I, I honestly would have to go look it up. But this is my second oldest, and it is actually the one I bought for this upper when I built it. And that was back... Wow, it may be older than that. Uh, it, we may be going back further. This has always worked beautifully. No issues at all. The only thing I've had to do with this is replace gas rings when they wore out. Standard stuff. Uh, I think it's on its third, third or fourth set now. Have not had to replace the firing pin, pin, the retaining pin. I have not had to restake anything, tighten anything down. The cam pin is great. Uh, we're still on the original extractor. We're still on the original ejector. Have not even had to replace that O-ring in there for the extractor. Okay. I, I can't even tell you how many thousands of rounds. Okay. We're good. The, the ADI has worked beautifully for 5.56. It has worked beautifully for 300 Blackout Supersonic. What it has not been super happy with was 300 Blackout really slow subs, even suppressed. Just not 100%. In fact, I would put it at 50%. Something about this bolt carrier group is causing a little more friction, a little less power to the ejection stroke, to the, the cycle. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's not sealing properly for the gas tube. I don't know if there's some sort of 
hang up here. I mean, that is pretty stiff, okay? But for five, five, six, for 300 blackout supersonic, no problems. Now, the upper in question cycles just fine with the BCM. That's not flopping around either, okay? Does it reliably cycle with this when it's freshly looped? No. Uh, I even tried that lightweight 300 blackout suppressed subsonic spring. There, I can't remember who makes it, but it's a lighter weight spring. Better, still not enough. There's something going on, okay? And then we have the Toolcraft. Now, the Toolcraft, much more reliable out of that. And keep in mind, when, I, when I'm talking about my subsonic suppressed, this is only with my super light loads. They're, they're 208 grain bullets, but they're going really slow. I mean, we, I, maybe I'm at 800 feet per second, okay? So marginal loads, but they work with the BCM. So there's definitely something going on with the ADI. The Toolcraft, I would not, I would not use it in an oh shit situation. I would prefer to have the BCM for 300 black, the, the 300 blackout situation. Uh, however, it is the one that lives in that upper normally. Why? because I don't run those subsonics any other time except fun at the range. I run significantly faster subsonics. They are subsonic, but not by a lot. If I had a longer barrel, they'd probably break the sound barrier. It's just those super light marginal loads that are not there, which means that as far as I'm concerned, in spec, there's nothing wrong with this. The ADI, in spec, nothing wrong with it. You run it with 500 black, or, uh, 556 or 300 blackout supersonics. They eject normally. They cycle properly. I've got a good ejection pattern. No issues. The higher end bolt is just that much smoother. It's just, it's working more perfectly to take it, to let those marginal rounds function. Now, does that mean you shouldn't buy either of these two? No, I'm not saying that. But I am saying there's a difference. Now, am I saying that the ADI is the bottom of the heap? No. I'm not saying the Toolcraft is better than the ADI. These particular examples have the results I, I described. If I swap the bolts, it is not conclusive. If I put the BCM bolt in either of these two, it is not conclusive. I still get failures here or there. It's better, but not perfect. Now, mostly I'm putting it down to the carriers, okay? I think that there is a little more friction, a little less perfect gas seal maybe. Things are not quite as perfect as the BCM. For 5.56, Suppressed or unsuppressed for 300 blackout supers, even factory 300 blackout uh, subs or anything even close to them in terms of my reloads. I've had no problems. All three are great. So to me, that says, yes, there's a difference, but it isn't that there's something wrong with the other two. It's that it's like saying that you know, your Toyota Camry is not a high performance racing machine. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it, but maybe if you're going to the racetrack, you want a race car. Well, if you're going somewhere where marginal might happen and might be reality, spend the money on the premium bolt. I, I mean, I'm not sponsored by BCM. I've had it forever. I can't speak for other examples, but for my three, the BCM is the best I've got. Now, I have tried, I don't have it here, I've tried my factory bolt from my Smith & Wesson, my M&P, which is this lower, in 300 blackout with those super slow subsonics. It works. 
it's reliable. Not as perfect as this. I still, you know, the ejection's kind of weak. It is not, it doesn't feel as solid. This feels solid. Uh, I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting that full stroke. There's a little oomph at the end, you know, it's not just barely finishing the stroke. But it's better than these two. Now, on the other hand, let's keep, let's be fair. Thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. That Smith & Wesson one, same. Thousands and thousands, I mean, they're, they're old. They're, they're 10 plus years old at this point, I guess. Uh, the Smith & Wesson is. I don't, honestly don't know how old this one is. And all those rounds polish things. They break things in. I've got an itch, but I don't want to touch. Uh, you know, they, they wear off those edges. These two have really not had time to wear off all those little edges. Uh, I have a fair number of rounds down the pipe with this guy. And it is the one that lives in that 300 blackout upper. But, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe five or 600? The ADI has been living in the What Would Stoner Do build, and I've probably got a thousand rounds through it at this point. Um, yeah, about that. Maybe a little more. Works great for that. Uh, it does eject a little forward. It doesn't throw them way behind me. Um, this guy which uses the BCM one uh, because it's, it's had enough time that I don't want to mess with the head spacing. Uh, it is married to that, that chamber, those lugs, done. Uh, this guy, I mean, I can't even tell yet, but it ejects behind me. I mean, it is four o'clock, five o'clock. Um, you know, rounds are going behind the guy next to me, not hitting them and not going in front of them. Both of these two tend to be a little more forward. Um, this one with 300 blackout, anything other than my super slow stuff, straight over. It's a three o'clock ejection. So I treat them all the same. I lube them up the same. I grease them the same. Uh, I see no reason to change my procedures. I just keep it in mind. If I'm using those super slow ones, I either swap out and I put the BCM in, or I'm using the Toolcraft and I just accept that eh, every other mag, I'm gonna have a short stroke. Okay, rack the bolt, go again. It happens. I don't use the ADI in that. I do use the ADI in what would Stoner do build? That's where it lives now. I mean, I try to marry them up. It was testing purposes, was all the swapping around. This lives in the What Would Stoner Do build. And I've had zero failures with it in that role. 5.56, five, 16 inch barrel, flawless. Now, I can buy this, or I can buy both of these. So if you're doing a 5.56 five, upper or two, I don't know what to tell you. I haven't had any failures with 5.56 five, with either of them, not even in close. No, even like random, oh, hey, it didn't eject properly or something. They've been great. There's no wear marks that are weird. There's no, you know, anything getting loose. If anything, I would love for the, the pin, for the firing pin to get a little loose on the ADI. It's a pain to get in and out. Uh, but if I had to buy another one and I wasn't concerned with the extra money, I'd get another BCM. Uh, I really, it has been a great piece of hardware. It works and I trust it. I trust it more than I trust these other two. So, I mean, take it for what it's worth. That is the, some rounds in, you know, we're, they're not new anymore. They're not all pristine and shiny. That's been my experience. If you got a different experience with either or all three of them, put a note in the comments. Let's hear it. Let's you know get some more experience because I've got one of each. It's not like I got a big sample size here, guys. And I don't know personally anybody shooting any of these.
Okay, this is the only BCM I've got numbers on from personal experience. This is the only toolcraft I have numbers on from personal experience. The only ADI. I can't say that, hey, you know, the ADI doesn't do this. It doesn't do it for me with my example in my upper. I, if I put it in somebody else's upper, is it, is it flawless? Very well could be. We don't know. I don't have that you know, to work with. So take care, have fun, stay safe, y'all. Do your own testing. Find out. Post a comment. Let's hear them. Say hi. Thank you.